Okay, so this lesson is on polynomial division, and it goes with the area model, which is the way that I am teaching polynomial division in the 2021-2022 school year. So um, there are other strategies for doing polynomial division, and if you look them up online, um, you'll see like there's long division and then there's synthetic division. And because we've been working with the area model for our multiplication and our factoring this year, I wanted to be consistent with that and teach you how to divide polynomials using the area model. So this is the strategy that you are going to be expected to demonstrate in class. So um, before we get into that, like we need to, to make sure that we ground what we're doing when we're doing division. So I want you to recall polynomial multiplication. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little review. So multi, and so if I have something like 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 and I multiply that by x minus 4, um, we can use an area model to figure out what the product is. So if you remember like the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. So what we're doing is we set up this rectangle and that was not the best move there, hang on, there we go, okay, and we put like 2x squared, 3x, and then negative 1 on like the, the base, and then for our height, we have x minus 4, and then I can find the area by finding the area of each individual box there, um, and so if I have 2x squared times x, that would give me the area of this box, and 3x times x gives me the area of this box, and so forth, and then what we do is we add all the boxes up in order to find the area of the whole thing, and that becomes the product. So um, 2x squared times x is 2x to the third. Um, then we have 3x squared and negative 1x. So that's just multiplying. And then of 2x squared times negative 4 is negative 8x squared. And then 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. And negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And that is essentially the multiplication. Now, what is important to notice there is that you have like terms on those diagonals. So I have negative 8x squared and 3x squared, and I can combine those to get negative 11, um, or sorry, negative 5x squared. Okay, and then I have my x terms on this diagonal, and it's really important that you see how that um, plays out, because when we go to do the division, we're going to need to leverage this fact. And so we have our like terms right there. And so the product here, we would add all the little areas up and we'd have 2x to the third minus 5x squared minus 13x plus 4. And that is the answer. So on the test where you guys had this, a lot of you just left it in the box. Um, the box is, is a, a way of modeling how to do the multiplication, but it's not the actual answer. So the actual answer is the sum of all the areas and it would be written as a polynomial expression when you're done. So um, again, notice the pattern there with the like terms because what we're going to do today with division is we're going to go backwards. We're going to start with one of the factors and what we know the area is and go backwards and find the other dimension, okay? And that's essentially division. So kind of get into to that. Um, so division and multiplication. Division and multiplication are inverse operations. Okay. Um, and inverse operations mean that they undo each other. So for example, four times five is 20. And then you could do 20 divided by 5 to get 4. So what we just did was we just did a multiplication problem where we had these two, these are the factors, and we looked for the product. When you're doing division, you have the product, you have one of the factors, and then you do division to find the other factor. So um, just so you can follow the thought process there, 
um, if we were going to do this problem out, 3x squared plus 13x plus 4 divided by 3x plus 1, and then we're going to be looking for what's called the quotient. Um, this is what goes in the box. Okay, that right there, and but like that is pointing to the whole thing. I don't want you to think it's pointing just to the 13x, okay? It's pointing to the whole parentheses. This is going to go on the right-hand side, or sorry, the left-hand side of the box. The notes do have it correct. On the left-hand side of the box, and then we're looking for the quotient, which is going to be on the top of the box, okay? So let's go and do some examples. So the degree of the um, polynomial is the number of like boxes or the number of columns, we'll say the number of columns going across the top. So um, for this example here, so we're gonna have the 3x squared plus 13x plus four. And we're going to divide that by 3x plus 1. So notice that the degree is 2. And so we're going to have two columns, like so. Okay, so two columns. And then um, the divisor here, the 3x plus 1, is what's going to go on the left-hand side over there. So we're going to put the 3x and the plus one. Now, um, I can't go back in this particular program, I can't click back over to, I'm doing this in PowerPoint, so uh, you can't go back in um, uh, to a previous slide. So what we want here is we want this to go in the box. The problem is, is that I don't exactly know how to split things up. So if you remember the multiplication problem, like we had the, we had an add, going um, on those diagonals and right now all I know is that like the x terms need to add up to 13x but there's a like an infinite number of things that will add up to 13x so there is some um, thought process work that has to go in here so we're going to start by putting the 3x squared in that upper left box and then we're going to do this very much how we did the factoring. So remember, like factoring and division are closely related to each other. So we're going to ask ourselves, 3x times what would give me 3x squared? And hopefully you can answer that question and say, okay, well, that would be x. And then we do the multiplication down here. x times 1 gives me 1x. And now we have to figure out what goes in this box right here, okay? Um, because remember, to get the product, we would have had to add these together. Now, I know they have to add up to 13x. So my thought process here is 1x plus what would give me 13x? And you can actually solve that like a little equation. So subtract the 1x from both sides, and we get 12x. So 12x is what goes in that box there um, because the 1x plus the 12x will give you that 13x. And now we can repeat the process. So 3x times what gives me 12x? Well, that would be 4. And then do 4 times 1 to get 4 down here. And that matches the 4 in the problem up there. And so, so I did one times four to get four, and then that matched what I was supposed to get. So three X plus one, and then I have X plus four, and when you add these up, three X squared, and then this is 13 X plus four, it equals what um, we had in that polynomial. So the answer to the problem is X plus four. It's gonna be this going right across the top. So pause the video right there if you need to um, and just kind of review that problem, um, kind of go through that thought process again. I'm gonna do another example on the next slide. So I'll take you through the, the process a couple times. Okay, so our second one 
is going to be this. It's going to be 2x to the third plus x squared minus 8x plus 3. And we're going to divide that by 2x minus 3. Now, if you look at some of the other strategies that you can do online, um, the only other way to do this is with polynomial long division. And it's awful. Um, trust me, this is way, way, way better. And it's very, very flexible. So remember that the degree of the polynomial is what dictates the number of columns that you need to have. So since this is degree three, when I make my box, I'm going to have three columns. Okay, and then we're going to have the 2x and then the minus three off to the side. And then our answer is going to be on the top of the box. And I start out by putting the 2x to the third in that upper um, left hand column and then we really approach it like we did with the factoring so 2x times what gives me 2x to the third well that would be x squared and then multiplying um here I'm watching the clock um x squared and negative three gives me negative three x squared and now comes like the the little tricky part um that's a squared there okay so I know that um, that I'm going to have my x squareds on this diagonal, and they have to add up to 1x squared. So you can do this in your head. Like, you're welcome to do this in your head, but I'm going to do the scratch workout. So negative 3x squared plus something has to give me that 1x squared, okay? And so you can actually treat this like a little equation. Okay, and so that something is a 4x squared, and so we put a 4x squared there. And then again, the reason for that is because when I add these up, I need to get a 1x squared. And now I repeat the process. So 2x times what would give me 4x squared? Well, the answer to that is 2x. And then 2x times negative 3 gives me negative 6x. And then I have to do that thought process again. So on this diagonal, okay, so I did negative 3 times 2x get negative 6x. Um, this is going to be my other x term, and they have to add up to negative 8x. So whatever goes here has to add with this to get the negative 8x. So to do a little scratch work, negative 6x plus what? gives me negative 8x. Add the 6x. Again, you're welcome to do that in your head. And we end up with negative 2x. So we end up with a negative 2x right there. And then we do 2x times what gives me negative 2x. That would be negative 1. And then negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And notice that that matched. Now remember that the answer is this. So you can't just leave it like that. You do have to rewrite it. So it's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay. And as always, pause the video if you need to, like rewind it, kind of go through the process again. It's one of the advantages of using a video. In class, I have to move on to the next example. Like we can open it up for questions, for a little bit, um, which you can't do when you're watching a video. But with a video, you can rewind this and just kind of walk through it again if there's some stuff that you missed. Okay, so at this point in the lesson, there is a, a pause for you to do one on your own. And if you're doing this video at home, you should stop the video, okay? and actually try to work this out. Now the answer that you are going for here is 6x minus 5. So you should be able to check your work because I'm telling you this is the answer that you should get. You should get 6x minus 5. If you don't get 6x minus 5, this is what I want you to do, is take a photo of your work, okay? and email it to me or post it on Teams or something, okay? Um, and I will look over your work and I'll help you figure out what you did wrong, okay? So we do wanna have that interaction even if you are doing the video um, from home and you're doing this lesson from home or you're reviewing. Now, um, the last thing that we need to talk about is not everything divides evenly. 
So for instance, like if I were to do 20, like divided by five, like that gives me four and that divides evenly. But what if I did 20 divided by three? Well, that doesn't divide evenly. So if I do this out, like and say, okay, well, three goes into 20 six times and that's 18. And I have this like remainder two that happens. And um, I do want, so this is like six remainder two. So it doesn't divide evenly. And one of the ways that you can write that, that you probably don't remember from elementary school, just because it's not the most common way, is that you can take this and this and write it as a fraction. Um, so you could say six and two thirds. So make sure you're writing that down and you remember it because this is what we do with polynomials. We actually write it as a fraction. Um, so you have like your quotient and then you have plus and then you'll have the remainder over whatever your divisor was. So you're going to write it like that. So let's look at an example of something that does not divide evenly. So we have 3x squared minus 14x plus 1 over x minus 5. So remember that the degree tells us I'm doing this during my planning period. So I have a class coming in in about 10 minutes. So um, that's why I keep looking up. I'm looking up at the clock in the back of my room. Um, so this has a degree of two. And so that means we're going to have two columns. And then um, this is going to be the x minus five. And the three x squared goes there. And we ask ourselves, x times what gives us three x squared? And so that is x and you can stop like one of the great things about this method is that you can stop and check this at every point along the way so you can quickly do x times 3x and get the 3x squared and you can move the problem in that forward direction which is definitely a lot more comfortable now we'll do the 3x times negative 5 to get negative 15 x right there and now we have to do some thinking um, this plus whatever goes here has to give us that negative 14 X so off to the side I'm gonna do this and you can, again you can do it in your head if you want negative 15 X plus something has to give me negative 14 X so I add the 15 X to both sides and that something has to be 1 X and now we repeat the process x times what gives you 1x so hopefully we're good with um, 1 and then 1 times negative 5 gives you negative 5 but notice this these two numbers don't match so we wanted a positive 1 and we got a negative 5 and what that means is it did not divide evenly um, so we actually have a remainder so our answer to this is going to be the 3x plus 1 that we're getting from right here but we're also going to have a remainder and here's how we find out what the remainder is we've got a negative 5 but we want a positive 1 so we do the same thought process we've done before negative 5 plus what gives us 1 we're gonna add 5 and that something has to be a six so the remainder there is six okay and the way we're going to write that is six over the x minus five so you write it over whatever that divisor was so as with all the other problems um stop the video rewind it like let yourself go back and just hear it again see it again especially if you were busy taking notes and you just need to follow through that thought process one more time um, to go through it and now we'll take a look at a practice so here we go um, you're gonna do 6x squared minus x minus 3 divided by 2x plus 1. Um, and honestly, um, on your at-home test for this, one of the things that I'm having you do on your at-home test, if you haven't looked at it yet, is you have to go to like a website or an app, and I want you to find another way to do this so that you can maybe appreciate how much easier this way is than a lot of other ways that you could do it. Um, so I want you to pause the video and work this one out. 
um, the answer that you should get is 3x minus 2, and then you can either do minus 1 over 2x plus 1, okay, or you can do plus negative 1, like that is also fine. So you can do either the minus or the plus negative, they're both equally correct. But um, as with the last one, if you don't get that answer, I do want you to reach out to me. Um, you guys know how to get a hold of me to say, okay, can you go over that or can you send me, like I can make you a video, I can do a screencast, but I can do some other things to try to help you out and find out what's going wrong in that process. Um, so, so be involved with that. And then the last thing I want to mention is if you're missing one of the the term. So let's say you had like x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, and you are going to divide that by x plus 1. Now, I, this, I'm making this up like totally on the fly. This is not in the notes, so I'm going off script here. Um, so this has got degree 4, so we're going to have four boxes. Um, we have the x plus 1, and then I put in the x to the fourth, um, and so I get x to the third, and then x to the third times one is x to the third. Now, notice up here, so this gets into the whole concept of the missing term. There is no x to the third. It goes from x to the fourth down to x squared. So what you need to remember is that there is a zero x to the third here. So when you're doing your... Um, thought process over here. X to the third plus what gives you zero X to the third? Well, that's going to be negative X to the third. And then uh, this will be negative X squared, right? Yeah. And then this will be negative X squared. And then um, we want a negative X squared plus what gives me two X squared. Um, so that'll be three X squared goes right in there. Um, so this will be what? 3x. So x times 3x is 3x squared. This is 3x. Um, oh, it's got to add up to negative 3x. So that'll give me negative 6x. And again, like I just did that in my head. Okay. Um, this uh, becomes negative 6. This is negative 6. Negative 6 plus what gives me positive 4? That would be a 10. And so my answer to this would be x to the third minus x squared plus 3x minus 6 plus that remainder 10 over x plus 1. Um, I had an extra slide. Um, that says x plus 1 for what it's worth. Okay, so that is how to do polynomial division using the area model. And mostly it just takes some practice. Um, synthetic division, I think, is easier it's like faster for some of the problems but synthetic division is very limited in when you can use it so um this is this will work for all kinds of polynomial division of all levels of difficulty at all times and it doesn't ever get harder which is really really nice and it's a lot easier than um the long division process so that's the lesson and i hope this helps and you should be set to at least um, make a good faith effort on your homework